Good news, the airdrop of the Edoblox token is about to happen. But before I need to deploy the airdrop app, and I don't want to mess it up, otherwise the whole token project is going to fall apart. So in this video, my mission is to deploy the airdrop app, smart contract, backend and frontend. And I need to make sure that everything works fine. If you are new here, I'm Julian and on Edoblox, I teach blockchain development. The first step is getting the list of addresses and the different token allocation. There is a basic allocation share among everybody who sign up and a bonus allocation share among the students of it the blocks. To collect emails, I wanted something quick and easy. That's why I use MailChimp. I created a landing page for the airdrop and participants had to put their email and Binance Smart Chain address. I already have many other people registered on my email list on MailChimp, so I had to find a way to isolate the participants of the airdrop. That's why I configured the registration form to automatically attach a tag to each participant. This allowed me to easily export this list of people using the tag. Next task was to identify the students of my courses on it the blog so that they can receive their bonus allocation. For that, I exported a list of all the students from the website of it the blogs. After, in Excel, I calculated the basic and bonus allocation for each participant of the airdrop. After, the next step was to upload the data of the allocation to a database. For that, I created a script. The idea is that the script would pass my spreadsheet and insert records in the database. It's easier to pass CSV files compared to the native format of spreadsheets like Excel. So I exported my spreadsheet into a CSV file and I used a library to pass this file. After, I had to decide which database system to use. The choice is either a structured database like MySQL versus NoSQL databases like MongoDB. Since there will be only one collection of data, it's not really worth it to accept the overhead cost of a MySQL database, so I just went with MongoDB. I used to use a service called MLabs for MongoDB, but they were bought by Atlas, another hosting company for MongoDB, which is managed by the creators of MongoDB itself. So I just created a free account on Atlas and hosted the database there. Then I run my script to export the data from the spreadsheet to the database. And that was it for the data part. The next step is to deploy the smart contract of the airdrop. This smart contract will allow airdrop participants to claim their tokens. It uses a system of signature and I already explained this in another video. It's a smart contract written with Solidity and the Truffle framework. In Truffle, there is a built-in migration system to deploy smart contracts. You need to add a configuration of the mainnet network of Binance Smart Chain. The smart contract needs an admin address to process the token claims. The private key of this address is going to be stored in the backend of the airdrop app. Normally it should be safe, but I don't want to take any chance. So I just generated a new pair of private key address that will only be used for the airdrop app. The airdrop will also use the address of the ETB token. I already deployed the token before and the migration system of Truffle stores the deploy addresses in a JSON file. So we can grab this address in the migration file of the airdrop contract. After the deployment, I'm going to send 100,000 tokens to the airdrop contract. This will cover both the basic allocation and bonus allocation. There was a last caveat. If you run the default migration command of Truffle, it's going to run all the migration that you have defined, which in my case, include the migration of the token. But I don't want to deploy the token again. I want to run only the migration of the airdrop contract. I did some research and I found this command that allow you to do just that. So I run this command and finally the airdrop contract was deployed. The next step was to deploy the backend and the frontend of the airdrop app. There are many options for which framework to use and I decided to use Next.js. Next.js is a Node.js framework to create web application. I really like its simplicity and the fact that you can create both backend and frontends in the same project. And for the frontend, it uses React, which is the standard of the web. In the past, I used Heroku to deploy a lot of apps, so I first thought of using Heroku. However, the free tier of Heroku had some limitation that may make it unsuitable, especially the fact that if the app does not receive any traffic for 30 minutes, it goes into a sleeping mode. It probably takes some time to wake up, and I didn't want people to lose patience and leave. I could have bought the pet tier of Heroku to remove this limitation, but I found out about an alternative called Versal. 
Verso is a hosting company that offers hosting for static frontends similar to Netlify. On top of this, Verso also offers hosting for Next.js apps, including for apps that have a backend, which is our case. Unlike Heroku, the app does not go to sleep after a period of inactivity, and since Verso is the same team that created Next.js, it convinced me that it might be a good option. So I decided to deploy the Android app on Verso. When I created my project there, I realized that there was not a problem. On Verso, you create a project and you connect it to the Git repo of your app. Every time you push a new commit to your Git repo, Verso takes the latest version of the code, rebuild it, and redeploy it. The Git repo of Idoblox is a mono repo, which means I put absolutely everything in a single Git repository. The code of the courses, the code of the YouTube tutorials, and the code of various apps like the AirDrop app. The big advantage of that is that me and Idoblox students only have one repo to deal with. However, for deployments, it can be a problem because I don't want to redeploy the AirDrop app when I push an unrelated change to the repo of Idoblox, like a tutorial, for example. I also don't want to hit the monthly deploy limit of Verso. So I found an easy solution. Verso connects to a specific branch of your Git repo. By default, it's master, but you can change this. So I created a new branch just for deploying the AirDrop app. When I develop, I commit on the master branch, and even when I push this to GitHub, it's ignored by Verso. And when I'm ready to deploy the latest change of the AirDrop app, I merge from master to the deployment branch, I push to GitHub, and this triggers a deployment on Verso. Next, we have to deal with configuration specific to each deployment and secrets, like the private key that produces signatures for the AirDrop contract. Especially for secrets, you don't want to commit this in your Git repo, otherwise anybody can steal your secrets and in the case of private key, steal your money. The solution is to put this in environment variables. Verso has an UI that you can use to define any environment variables. For each environment variable, you define a series of key value and only the app will be able to access this. The final issue I encountered was how to display a nice URL. By default, Verso assigns a default URL to your project. It's okay if you are just testing, but it's not really suitable for a production deployment. Fortunately, you can use a custom domain for your deployment. For that, you go to your DNS provider for your domain name and you add a CNAME record that points to the DNS of a Verso. After that, you can add your custom domain in your Verso project and that's it. After, you finally have a nice looking URL. I wrote tests for the airdrop smart contract. I also did a manual testing on a local development blockchain to check the integration with the front end. But I still didn't feel perfectly comfortable. What if I miss something? Because once I publish the airdrop app and send the link to everybody, it's too late. If there is a bug, it's going to be really hard to go back and tell everybody to redo the airdrop again. I absolutely needed to make sure that everything was rock solid. So I decided to do an airdrop on a testnet network of Binance Smart Chain. I set up another landing page on MailChimp, collected a few emails, I uploaded the data in MongoDB, deployed everything, and I asked people to go through the process of the airdrop. I also created a test scenario to try out the airdrop with different addresses. I first tried what I call the happy path, which means when everything goes right, I try addresses who have a bonus, addresses who don't have a bonus, and make sure the correct number of token was sent to them by using BS scan, which is basically like ether scan, but for Binance Smart Chain. After I tried the unhappy path, which means scenarios where things don't go as expected. For example, what happens if someone tried to claim tokens with a malform address? Does it crash the app and other people cannot use it anymore? Or does it display a nice error message? What about if you try to get your airdrop tokens twice? Can you game the system or does the app handle this properly with a nice error message? I try all these different scenarios and it worked fine. After having done all this testing, I finally felt confident about the airdrop app. I deployed the smart contract, the backend and the frontend. If you register for the airdrop, you can claim now your ETB tokens with the link down below. You do need to have some BNB tokens to pay for the transaction fees on the Binance Smart Chain but don't worry, it will be very cheap. After you claim your tokens, you can check on the BSC scan your address to make sure you actually receive the tokens. And with these tokens, you will be able to vote for the content of Eat the Blocks here on YouTube. The voting app will be put online very soon.
Before deploying the airdrop app, I thought that it would be a very small step, everything would be easy and quick to do. But during the deployment, I realized that there were all these little details that I haven't thought about before. So if you are a developer and you want to launch your own blockchain project, make sure to plan enough time for the production deployment because it will probably take more time than you think. Another thing I learned is the importance of launching on testnet first. Even if you did a lot of tests locally, both for the smart contract and the integration with the front end, you might not still anticipate some edge cases and the different ways people will use your app. So you do need this phase of testing on a public testnet. I'm super excited to start this new adventure with the token. So go claim your tokens now and I will see you in another video. Bye bye.